Community Community Church, our pastor, Pastor William B. Lee Sr. Help us to uplift the name of the Lord. We do not own the rights to this music.
Another blessed Sunday the Lord has made. We see our rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you that has joined the fellowship with us this morning. We thank God for you. Amen. Pray the blessings of the Lord continue over your life according to his word and to his promises to each and every one of us. Thank God for the beginning of being present with us this morning. Thank God for each and every one of you that are on Facebook Live and YouTube and those that are Zoom in. We have another lesson this morning uh, from our great Apostle Paul, who's once again speaking to the body of Christ, speaking to the church. We can take heed to Word of God through the Apostle Paul as we are, uh, it is preparing us for the Lord's return. We know the Lord is soon to come. Yes. And we want to be ready. We want to be ready, 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 ready. Amen. The Bible says we brought nothing into this world, mm -hmm. and it's for certain mm -hmm. we can carry nothing out. So we want to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. Not holding on to grudges, beginning, nothing. Not to old man, not to old any man, nothing but to love. Yes. We don't want to. We don't want to hold on to nothing. We want to be ready to meet them in the air. Yes. But that's not what we're dealing with tonight. I mean, this morning. We thank God once again. Uh, we're gonna pray, and then we'll get into our lesson. Bow here, dear gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come this morning thanking you once again. We attend the mercy and the kindness of God. Go mind to assemble together to study of your word. You say where two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the Spirit of Christ in our midst this morning. Amen. We pray that you move in this place according to your will. Open up our hearts and minds and give us the understanding that we need to maintain. And we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Very familiar passage of scripture this morning, the book of Philippians. Uh, lesson thought this morning is I can do all things through Christ. Very familiar passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. Very popular. Very well used. Very well, well I should say very well quoted. Yes. A lot of people quote it. We're going to dig into it this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we we're in the book of Philippians, and I'm reading the King James Version as, a, as it is. You can follow along in your translation, and we'll have it on the screen in the King James Version if you are able to see it. Philippians, the fourth chapter, we're going to read verses 11 through 13 in your hearing. Uh, and it goes, it goes like this, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of all. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Well, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be humble, both to abound and to suffer need. 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to the let's go back to the uh, 11th verse and we'll deal with it again slow. We'll deal with it again slow. He says, not that I speak in respect of one. He says, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am Therewith to be content. Mm -hmm. we, we have to take note. We have to take note of, of that. We have to take note. He said, whatever, he said, for I have learned. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a learned <laughs> uh, virtue. It's got mm -hmm. to be a learned virtue. I have, he said, for I have learned mm -hmm. whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Right. Content uh, suggests to us 
acquiescing, ready to accept something without protest, also suggests in a state of peaceful satisfaction. Mm -hmm. This is being content. He said, I have learned. I have learned this behavior. I've learned this virtue. I've learned this attitude. He said, whatsoever state I am, whatsoever situation I'm in, whatsoever condition I'm in, mm -hmm. he said, I've learned to be content. He said, I've learned to accept accept it without protest. Right. I've learned to uh, I've learned I've learned to be in a state of peaceful satisfaction. Mm -hmm. This is very this is very important to note. This is very important to note. Uh, he said he goes on to say in the twelfth verse, he said, I know both how to uh be abased. He he knows how to be humble. Mm -hmm. He knows how to be humble, and I know how to abound. He knows how to increase mm -hmm. or prosper. He knows how to do both. Mm -hmm. He said, everywhere and in all things, he said, I am instructed both to be full. Yeah. He's talking mm -hmm. about uh, his stomach full. <laughs> He said, I know how to be full yeah. and to be humble. Yeah. He said, I know how to be full and no. He said, both to abound. Yeah. He said, I know how to prosper or increase, multiply, whatever, and to suffer need, to endure, to endure uh, lack or endure without. I know how to do, he said, I know how to do these things. Here is the thought. He said, I can do all things through Christ, yeah. which strengthens me. Now, here is where the thought comes in. That word strengthen. Strengthen. Strengthen suggests uh, to empower, to support, to to prevail, strengthen suggests to become more powerful or more difficult to break. Now, you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, we this 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 text is very very well quoted. Very yes. well quoted. I can do all things through Christ. <laughs> but hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Listen to what he is saying. He is saying first, the first thing we must understand that uh, we are empowered or we are supported yeah. Come on. by Christ, by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So therefore, that should leave you and I uh, in a peaceful satisfaction. That should leave you and I content. In whatever state you're in, right. you have to hear what the Spirit is saying. You and I are not, you, you and I are not, uh, we, you and I cannot do all things through Christ who strengthened me and we cuss the folks out. <laughs> That's not, like I said, this text, this text is over, overused. People say, I do all things, and, and we mean, we mean some of everything. Paul is talking about. Uh, finding yourself in various situations, finding yourself in various conditions, uh, and understanding that you and I are empowered or we are supported by the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so since Christ strengthens us, it makes us more powerful and it makes us more difficult to break. All right. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. There's times where you feel discouraged. There's times where you feel like giving up. But because of the power, the empowerment or the support of the Holy Ghost, you press on. Mm -hmm. You press on. It's not, it's not, it's not you or it's not I. Right. 
Right. It's because of the fact that the Holy Ghost makes us prevail. We prevail because we're strengthened. We're strengthened by Christ. We're strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And and the one thing you must understand is that uh, whatever your situation is, you have to find contentment because mm -hmm. uh, as a child of God, as a child of God, we can't we can't necessarily just manhandle the situation. All right. We can't necessarily just manipulate the situation. So we have to recognize the state we are in. And then we have to understand the fact that uh, I can be content, I can be uh, peacefully satisfied in this state because I'm empowered by the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm sustained by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I'm delivered by the Holy Ghost. All this good stuff, I'm comforted by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. Yeah. And the comforter is designed to go along with you and, and comfort you and I in whatever condition that we are in. And so we're going to get into the lesson because a lot of us love to go, I do all things through Christ. And, <laughs> and you know, we fuss and folks out at that time. That's not that's not what I can do all things mean. <laughs> all I can do all things mean you find peaceful satisfaction in, in your in your condition. Yeah. You stop fussing, you stop cussing, you stop fighting. Mm -hmm. he, he said I he said I learned to be a base. You learn to put on humility. You learn to be humble. Right. He said, for I have learned. This is a learned behavior. <laughs> this is a learned behavior. This is why the Bible tells you and I, if any man will come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself. Mm -hmm. Take up his cross, follow after me, because you and I are going to have to learn what God accepts and what God does not accept. Yeah. He does not accept everything that we are offering him. Yeah. And then bold enough to stand and say, I'm saved anyhow. Okay, <laughs> well, that's it's, you, that's what your mouth said, so we won't, we won't argue with it. But this morning, we, we, Paul is letting the church know that he has learned how to uh, be content in whatever state he's in yes, because he can do all things through Christ. Now, what, what, happened, what happened is he, uh, he was commending the Philippians for the because of their financial support right. before. Mm -hmm. How they he would tell them in this in this book that on his journeys and in his mission that no other church supported him but them before. Mm -hmm. And it's and he's speaking to them in, in this particular uh, text. In this particular text, he said, I don't verse 10, he said, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now it's not on the Lord's feet. Verse 10, it's not on the worksheet, it's in the Bible. He said, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. He said, uh, he rejoiced in the Lord greatly that their concern for him uh, flourished again, that their concern for him revived again. Right. And, 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 uh, that they surely did care for him, but they just they lacked opportunity. They didn't yeah. they didn't have the opportunity to to do it again. He knew they would. Right. And then we get into verse eleven where we are. It said, "Not that I speak in respect to want." Verse eleven said, "Not that I." He said, "Not that I speak in regard of a need." It's not that I had a need. Mm -hmm. He said, "And I know." He said. Uh, I'm sorry, not that I speak in respect of, of want. He said, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am. This is why he said, he said, I'm not speaking, I'm not telling you this because I have a need or because I, I desire you to fulfill my need. Mm -hmm. He said, I have learned that whatsoever state I'm in mm -hmm. to be there with content. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, he would go and say because 
he could do all things through Christ. He could he could be hungry, or he could be full. He could he could humble himself, or he could increase. He he go on to say that he has learned to trust in the Lord and what he needs, basically. Mm -hmm. And 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 so this is what we must understand. We get sometimes we get in situations and sometimes we get in conditions. And we'll bust folks out because we think they ought to help us. Mm -hmm. First of all, try to be content in your, in your spot. Mm -hmm. And then see if the Lord don't send you some help. <laughs> we, we get in situations, we get in conditions, and we get in situations, and we think folks ought to just come uh, to the rescue and bail us out. First, we have to learn how and what's the other state we're in? Mm -hmm. to, be, to be peaceful, satisfied, peacefully satisfied. Yes, Lord. Because it is the Lord that empowers us or supports us. It is the Lord that makes us to become more powerful or more difficult to break. Your situation and your circumstance is not going to break you. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn how to be peaceful and, and satisfied where you are until deliverance comes. Yes. Look at the children of Israel. They were in bondage. They were in Egypt 400 and some years. Generation after generation after generation. Under the, the hard task of the Pharaoh. Now they went down there in good times. Mm -hmm. They went down there in plenty of time, good time. But then their state changed. Yes. <laughs> their condition changed. Their situation changed. And they became in bondage. Yes. And then yes. eventually the Lord sent Moses to deliver them. Yes. So you have to understand whatever state that you and I are in, we have to learn to be content because uh, help is on the way. Yes. Help is on the way. You, you and I may not, you are, you and I may not know which direction or when it's coming. Mm -hmm. But when you learn to put on humility, when you learn to humble yourself, we learn to humble ourselves, put on humility. Yes. Then the then the Bible says that uh, a contrite heart, a broken spirit, he said that it no that he would in no wise despise. When we learn to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you and I in due time. But until then, you ain't gonna do it to bust nobody out. No. And tell you what they ought to should have done for you. No. But anyway, we're gonna get off of that and move on. Let's get into the lesson. Uh, because understand we can do all things through Christ. And this is we're gonna get into the lesson with some understanding. This is not just a cute saying. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Paul is letting the church know. He said, look, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Who strengthens yes. me. Let's get into the, to the lesson. The Gospel of John 15, 5. It's not, it's not an option. He's not saying, I can wait on the Lord. I can do it myself. It's not an option. This is what the lesson is teaching us this morning. Yes. John 15 and 5. This is the Lord speaking. He said, I am the bond. Yes. And ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Yes. It's not an option. You have to understand who's strengthening you and I. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He's the vine, and we're the branches. Mm -hmm. And he that abideth in me, and I am him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. Hear what the Spirit is saying. If, if, if the Lord is the vine and we are the branches, you have to understand in a natural tree, if you break the branch off the vine, mm -hmm. it dies. Right. The, uh, the branch dies, not the vine. Right. <laughs> not the vine, the branch dies. He said, if, if you abide in me and I abide in you, he said, then you can bring forth much fruit. If, if that branch stays connected to the vine, then that, that branch produces fruit.
like crazy. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Now, in order for you and I to produce fruit, we have to stay connected to the vine. Amen. He said, uh, without me, without me, you can do nothing. Now, what is if we if we if we stay connected to the vine, if, if we if we abide in Christ, and Christ abide in us, yes. how the Holy Spirit understand? Oh. It's him who strengthens us. Understand what we're talking about. Oh, yes. He said, then uh we bring it forth much fruit. What is the fruit of the spirit? Mm. Uh, uh, we can do all this. He ain't, he ain't finished with me yet. He can do all this. <laughs> Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If we abide in the vine, and, 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 and if we abide in Him and He abide in us, He, he yeah. tells you now we bring forth much fruit. He said, Without me, you can do nothing. In order for you and I to, to in order for the, the fruit of the Spirit to manifest. Through us, yes, we have to abide in Christ. Yes, we yes. can't do it without Him. No. Hear what the Spirit said. It's not an option. It's not like I can do all things in Christ, or I can do it. It's like, no, you and I don't have an option. Praise God. In whatever state that you're in, you've got to humble yourself, or you've got to whatever whatever this the condition is. If you if you if you hungry, you got to act full. Mm -hmm. if you, if you, even if you're full, even if you're full, you got to act home. He said those, he said those that, that hunger and thirst after righteousness, he said they shall be filled. Yes. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have too many sayings and too many kitchen scriptures, and without understanding that we can do nothing yeah. without Christ. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm. Come on. Now, Let's get to the church. Second, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 3 and 5. Second Corinthians 3 and 5. He said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. It's not an option. This is not an option. This is not an option. You don't have an option to do through Christ or not do through Christ. Mm -hmm. You, you, this is not an option. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. We have to be found in Christ. Yes. You cannot be found in, you cannot be found in the works of the, of the law uh, trying to become righteous. That's self-righteous. Mm -hmm. The self-righteous, the righteousness of God for the body of Christ is faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. It is not in the works of the law trying to have your own self righteous. Mm -hmm. That day is over. Mm Hear -hmm. what the Spirit is saying. In yeah. order for you and I, to, in order for you and I to uh, to be what we are purposed to be, we have to first understand we have to be in Christ. We can't do nothing. Outside of Christ, we, we, the Bible said we were purchased with a price. We were purchased with a price. We don't belong to ourselves because of His great love and sacrifice, and because of the shedding of His blood, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has redeemed us. Yes, He has. The church, He redeemed us, reconciled us back to God. We can't do nothing without Him. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Whatever state that we are in, then we've got to be content there because we can do it. We can do all things because He's our support. Yes, he He's is. our empowerment. He's the reason why we won't break under pressure. Yes. But we have to understand 3 and 5 says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. The Bible says that no man ought to think more highly of himself than he ought to. As a redeemed, as a redeemed member of the body, hear what, yes. hear what the Spirit said. These are plain terms, plain, plain scriptures. As, as a member 
of the body. You you can't do it solo. No, and uh, it doesn't work solo. You can't be a hand and jump off the body and go do it by yourself. It doesn't work that way. You can only abide. You can only abide in the vine. You can only abide in the body. All right. All Understand right. what the spirit is saying. So stop thinking that you're sufficient of yourself. No, we're not. You can't. It is. Oh my God. You can't make it any plainer. Let, <laughs> let, let us move off of that. I think we get the picture. <laughs> Second Corinthians 12 9. Second Corinthians 12 9. He says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In our description, that word scripture says to empower, to support, to prevail. It says to become more powerful or more difficult to break. Look at what the Lord is telling Paul. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength yes. is made perfect in weakness. When you're going through and when I'm going through, and we learn to be content in our condition. Paul, we know the story. Paul had a, a condition of thorn in his flesh that he prayed to the Lord three times about. He said, I beseech, I beseech the Lord thrice. And, the, and, and this was the Lord's response. He said, I'm not going to move it. I'm not going to move it. You have to understand a lot of situations and conditions that we in, sometimes they, they they serve a purpose. Right. The Lord is not going to take you out of it. It's not going to move. He's not going to move it. Why? Because His grace. His grace is sufficient. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. You. Uh, he don't need you strong and him strong. He yes. don't need me strong and him strong. Praise God. Come on. Then we be talking about, yeah, I had to help God. We already said we got to help God. Anyway. I got to help God. I had to help God. He wasn't. No. Yeah. We got to get out of that mentality and understand most gladly, therefore, Paul said, will I rather glory in my infirmities? Look, look at what he said. He mm -hmm. said, because of the empowering of the support of God, because of the, he because he makes me more powerful and he makes it more difficult for me to break. He said, I'd rather glory in my infirmities. Mm -hmm. I'd rather glory in my weakness that the power of Christ rests upon me. A lot of us are too prideful to glory in our weakness. Mm -hmm. A lot of us like to cover and hide our weakness. As if to mm -hmm. say we don't have no flaw. <laughs> as if to say that we don't have no, no, no weakness. Infirmity is a weakness. It's a weakness. Yeah. It's just a weakness. And uh, he said, "I rather glory in my in my weakness." You know how you know how most of us are. We like to, <laughs> you know, what I've learned over the years. Most of us, the whole most of us, will be going down, but we're gonna hold out the post. You ain't. You're not gonna know it. You're not going to know it because Thank you. you're too prideful. You're too prideful. We're going to hold our composure. We're going to hold. We're going to maintain our composure. We're going down. We inside just tore up, broken. Without understanding that broken is a good thing. Yes. Broken is a good thing. I'd rather glory in my infirmities. That the that the power of Christ yes. rests on me. The Bible say. The Bible say if we fall on the rock with Christ and be broken. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. He said, but if the rock fall on us and we be uh, grinded to powder, wow. 
That's a bad thing. Yes, it is. That means we're gonna be destroyed. But if but if we be, if if we fall on the rock and be broken, then man, he can he can mend us. He can sew us back together, put us back together. Mm -hmm. But if the rock fall on us, he said we're gonna be grinding the cops. You remember when when uh, Aaron and them made that gold calf, go calf and, and, and graven and molten images, mm -hmm. and they and, and the Lord told Moses make a drink it. He grinded it all up, grinded it all up, and had to drink. Everybody that participated had to drink. Yes, indeed. It's not a good thing. No, if, we, not. if we grind the powder, that's that's uh that's punishment. Yeah. It's damnation, it's condemnation. We have to understand in our infirmities, in our infirmities, even even in our infirmities, we are in the state of being a base, humiliated. So the power of Christ can rest on us. Who, who's going to deliver you? Christ or are you going to do, deliver yourself? <laughs> we have a lot of ministries now telling folks that you can deliver yourself. I say, leave them false teachings alone. Praise God. You, you, it's, our salvation is never going to be us and Christ. Mm -hmm. It's just going to, it's, it's going to be uh, Christ. The Bible Peter told Peter told Israel that the same Jesus whom you crucified, yeah. the Lord has raised him up and made him both Lord. Mm -hmm. God has raised him up, and made him both Lord and Christ. Yeah. It ain't gonna it's not gonna be you and him. It's us mm -hmm. and him. Moving on, uh, Ephesians three and six. We're talking about doing all things through Christ. Ephesians three sixteen. I'm sorry. Ephesians three sixteen. Uh, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory yes, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the enemy. This is why, this is why when you are when you are in a, a difficult situation, this is why when you are in a hard situation, because you and I are strengthened by the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. it makes you and I more difficult to break. This is this is why we may bend, but we don't break. Because he said that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory yeah. to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Yeah. This is where our strength comes from. It comes from the inner man. It comes by it comes from his spirit, it comes from the Holy Ghost in the strengthening us in the inner man. Yes. Strengthening us is empowering us. It's supporting us. Mm -hmm. It's compelling us. Compelling us to go. It, the, 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 uh, the scripture says to become more powerful or more difficult to break. This is why if you keep your faith, you won't break. You're going to go through You go through some stuff. That's He said he chastens every son whom he loves. All sons that he receives, he said he chastens. There is no, yes, there is no way to avoid the chastening of God. No. If they tell you that, you need to stop listening. <laughs> There's no way to avoid the chastening of God. Amen. Because the chastening of God is just simply the discipline of God. Right. We are holiness people. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes. We are holiness people. What that is, we are, sanct we are sanctified people. Yes. Not arrogant, mm -hmm. not prideful, mm -hmm. sanctified. Sanctified is set apart unto God. Mm -hmm. We got to get out of that arrogant, prideful. That is not sanctification. That's what religion teaches. That's what denomination teaches. That's religion. Right. We are sanctified people. He said we are, a, what did he, he call us, a chosen generation? Yes. A royal priesthood? A holy nation, uh, uh, a peculiar people mm -hmm. that we should show forth the praises of Him that has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yes, sanctification is set aside or set apart unto God. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not arrogant or 
prideful. That's not what it is. That's religion. That's denomination. We don't talk to them. We don't talk to them. They don't talk to us. We don't even go down that road. <laughs> Philippians. Philippians. First chapter, sixth verse. Philippians. First, first chapter, sixth verse. Mm -hmm. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> being, being confident, mm -hmm. being sure, mm -hmm. being confident, being persuaded, being sure yes. of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you he who has begun a good work in you, you can do nothing without me. Amen. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Yes. <laughs> he that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. He who has begun a good work in you, yes. Will complete it until the day Jesus Christ. You have you and I have to find contentment. You and I you and I have to understand there's gonna be times where you're gonna have to humble yourself. And then there's gonna be times where you 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 will abound. Why? Because it's it's he that has begun a good work in you. Yes. He will complete it. But the issue is we uh, we fail to understand that we are workers together with God. We are we are His workmanship. We are we are His building. And so, just as the children of, the, of Israel were moving through the wilderness, mm -hmm. in the daytime they moved by the cloud, and so if the cloud didn't move. They didn't move. Mm -hmm. He who has begun a good work in you. Mm -hmm. So if the cloud didn't move, <laughs> David moved. Mm Hear -hmm. what the Spirit said to the church. He who brought you out. Mm -hmm. you, he who brought you out of bondage. Mm -hmm. He who has begun a good work in you. Yes. He who has begun to deliver you, to liberate you. It's he that will do it. So when the cloud moves, Israel, you move. Because he is going to he's going to take you to the promised land. He's going to take us to where we're going. We're not going to take him. No. So we have to hear what the Spirit said to the church. We can do all things through Christ. We can find ourselves content or peaceful, peacefully satisfied in whatever state we're in because we are empowered are supported, uh, we will prevail. It also said we, we, we will become more powerful or more difficult to break. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. You have to hear what the Spirit said to the church. But neither, not one of these scriptures gives you an opportunity to go out and, and, and do it on our own. That's mm -hmm. not. If I'm the Lord of heaven and the Lord of earth, Philippians 2.13 Philippians 2.13 uh -oh. It says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Yeah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. <laughs> Hear what the Spirit said to you. We need to just stop saying that. Without understanding. Because if you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, then sometimes you need to put on some humility. You need to humble yourself sometimes. Yes. That, that, that don't mean you just run over folks because you can do all things through Christ. That's not what he's talking about. Mm -mm. 
Paul said, I didn't, I didn't like this and respect the need or that I needed y'all to do something. He said, I didn't learn. In other words, let me paraphrase. He said, I didn't been, Paul said, I didn't been through no more stuff. I didn't learn just how to be content mm-hmm. and whatever stayed on me. Mm-hmm. You know how he go ahead and describe all the things he's been through. He was shipwrecked. Beaten with stripes and all kinds of stuff. And uh, but hear what the Spirit said. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now I, I want to spend a second there at the best here. Listen to what the scripture is saying. And it's not trickery. For it is God which worketh in you. God is working in you. God mm-hmm. is working in you and I. Listen, listen to what his work, <laughs> listen to what he's doing. Okay. He's working in you and I both to will. Yes. What is will? Will is a desire. Mm-hmm. What is he working in you? He's working in you a desire. And <laughs> to, will. to do of his good pleasure. He's not working in you a desire to do opposite of his good pleasure. Hmm. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. For it is God which working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He's working in you and I a desire. Uh, 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 he's working in you and I a desire and he's working in you and I to do of his good pleasure. So, so any any other desires that we have, it is not God working in them. It is not God working in them. It is, he said, for it is God working in you both to desire and to do of his good pleasure. Yes. This is what God is working in you. God is not working unrighteousness in you. No, he is not working. God is not working the desires of the flesh in us. No, he's not. No, he is working a desire and to do of his good pleasure. I can do all things to try all. Okay, well, you sure can because it is him that is empowering us. It is him that is supporting us. It is him that is making us more powerful and more difficult to break. You understand what the Spirit is saying. Moving on. Colossians 1 and 11. Colossians 1 and 11. These, these last few scriptures are directly to the church, the body of Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Colossians 1 and 11. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience, long suffering, <laughs> with joyfulness. Woo! I can do all things to Christ, but you ain't patient. <laughs> I can do all things to Christ, but you ain't got no joy. You always go mush mouth. What? What? Who's empowering you? Who's supporting you? Hear what the Spirit is saying. What? What bond are you connected to? If you're the branch, if you're the branch, and you're connected to the true vine. Patience, he said you will bring forth much fruit. Patience, long suffering is fruit of the spirit. Yes, it is. Joyfulness is fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. So what vine are you connected to if you are not producing these fruits? <laughs> Listen, he said strengthen with all might. He's telling you and I that he is the one that is supporting us. Right. He is the one that's empowering us. So why does why does why does why does our fruit not look like this? <laughs> wow. Think about that. He said strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. So why don't our fruit look like that? Who are we strengthened by? Strengthen is empowered. Who are we supported by? Yes. Come on, Pastor. 
because our fruit should look like this. Whatever state I am in, I got to be patient. Yeah. Whatever state I'm in, I got to be mm -hmm. long suffering. And whatever state I'm in, it's got to come with joyfulness. Joyfulness. Oh my. Well, I just couldn't have it. I was upset. Well, I know we all get upset because <laughs> you have to give up your spirit. Upset. Upset, anger, bitterness, envy, all that stuff, all that stuff is a spirit, just like joy, patience, and it is. And what I mean by what I'm what I'm trying to say is all these things will approach you. Mm -hmm. You and I don't, you and I, as long as we're alive, these spirits will approach you. Woo. Anger don't approach you. Woo. Bitterness sir, is going to approach you. Right. That's not the sin. It's going to approach you. This is good. <laughs> oh, but if you are producing it, mm. that's where the problem comes in. Because anger, you're going to be in a situation and the spirit of anger is going to come over you. Right. But you're going to have to resist it. Yes. The Bible tells you not to resist the devil. Yes. And he shall flee. But your pride and your arrogance got you believing these districts that tell you, you rebuke the devil. You, you can't rebuke the devil. The Lord told you to resist yes. the devil. Read your Bible. How? Remember the story when the sons of God came before God to present himself? Who came with him? Mm, Satan. So how are you going to rebuke him? He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Hear what the Spirit said to the church. Praise when the God. sons of God came before God to present himself, who else came? Yes. Satan came. And the Lord and, and the sons didn't say nothing. Why? They couldn't. It, the Lord said, "Well, what what are you doing? And what did what did what he said? He said, I'm going to and fro. Oh yeah. How you going to rebuke him? And he telling the Lord, I'm going to and fro, walking up and down the earth, seeking whom I can buy. But you didn't let your favorite bishop tell you, you rebuke the devil. You can't rebuke the devil." Stop, stop, stop setting up all of these lies. He said resist. When, 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 when anger come up on you, resist. Yes. Bitterness come up on you, resist. Yes. Hatred come up on you, envy come up on you, strife, resist it. That's what you do. Yes. He said it'll flee. All right. You're not going to rebuke it. Not even the archangel rebuke the uh, Satan, uh, mm -hmm. Satan, when they were disputing over the body of Moses, he said the Lord rebuked him. That's right. He didn't even, he didn't, the Bible said he didn't even bring up a relevant accusation. He said, Satan, the Lord rebuked him. All right, man. The archangel couldn't even do it. How he going to Yeah, I rebuked him, Satan. You ain't going to rebuke him, Satan. <laughs> you yeah, don't cut that out. He said, he said, resist him. Satan tempted Jesus on three different levels. Right. Come on, Pastor. And what did he do? Resist it. Yeah. He said, if you the son of God, turn you stones yeah. into bread. He gave the word up. He said, as it is written, <laughs> man don't live by bread alone. Yeah. But every word was seen out of the mouth of God. He, he resisted it. He didn't do what he was trying to prompt him to do. No. That's resisting. Uh, you got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Strengthened with all might according to his Glorious power unto all patience, long, long suffering, with with joyfulness. With joyfulness. How? Right. Right. So if this is not the fruit that we're producing, then you have to ask, we have to ask ourselves, who's empowering us? What spirit is empowering us? What spirit is strengthening us? Hmm. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Last one, we're gonna get you up. Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews 13, chapter, verse 20 and 21. Now, Hebrews, verse 20, come right out of the box and say, now the God of peace. peace. <laughs> Woo! 
Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. your will. His, his, will. will. His, his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You, you can do all things through Christ. Yes. Because that's how we are strengthened. That's how we are empowered. That's how we are supported. That's how we are comforted in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it makes us uh, powerful and it makes us difficult to break. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. But if we are not in Christ, or if we are not in the vine, then our branches will wither and die. Yeah. You and I have to be in the vine. We have to be in the vine. We can't, you and I cannot be, uh, the Bible says a little leaven, Leaven it the whole lump. So if you if you if you know if you take a little philosophy, a little take a little uh, uh, Paul warns him about the, the the philosophy of man and the, the, the deceit of man. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you take if you take a little bit of that every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which most, most of us are getting when we listen to these false teachers and they speak to our intellect and they speak to our the pride of life, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And then we'll text somebody else, you know, so and so said today, he said, blah, 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 blah. It, it is not scripture the first. Amen. But a little bit at a time. Passing somebody else, passing somebody else. A little bit at a time. The truth. Last lesson, Paul Timothy he said they have uh, turned from the from the faith. And he, had, he said they have turned concerning the faith and have made shipwreck. Yeah. Little by little, that's what happened. They made shipwreck. Because he's turning yeah. from the faith, turning from the body of, mm. of truth works the body of truth. So understand, he is saying in the 21st verse, Hebrews 13, 21, he said, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. What is the job of the pastor? Read the Bible. Don't tell me what somebody told you. Read the Bible. The, the, the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor and the teacher is gifted to the body of Christ to uh, to strengthen the body mm -hmm. and to uh, bring them to what? Perfection. It is to bring the body of Christ to perfection. Mm -hmm. And it's the, I'm sorry, it's for the, it's for the edifying, for the edifying of the body. And for the and for the perfecting of the saints. Thirteen twenty one says this: Make you perfect in every good work to do His will. This is the purpose of the leadership, the ministry. It is for the edifying of the body. It is for the perfecting of the saints. It is not to entertain them. All right. it's not to entertain. It is, it is not to keep you. I'm bored. Yeah. You ain't got to learn to work your own salvation now. It's not the pastor's job to entertain you, keep you from being bored. Yeah. If you value salvation, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to learn uh, how to fellowship with the Lord. Yeah. You have to learn how to fellowship with the Lord and understand He's working out in you. 
to will, not only to will, but to do a good, good pleasure. He said, uh, to, to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Well pleasing in his sight. We said before, we're going to say it again. The Lord is only accepting what he has required. He is not accepting what he has not required. He has required sanctification. Mm -hmm. He's not accepting anything less than sanctification. He, he's only accepting sanctification, he said, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. As it is always, we encourage you to repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Except the man is born again of the water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It is hard to be strengthened by Christ. It is hard for God to work in you without having the spirit. Because it is, it is God working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. But God is God is not uh, he's not working in the spirit of man. Mm -hmm. He's working in the spirit of Christ. He's working in the spirit of his son. He's working in the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that if we suffer We'll reign with. Mm -hmm. It's a if we deny him, he'll deny us. He said, but if we believe not, mm -hmm. he abided faithful because he cannot deny himself. God is not divided, he's he's whole. So he cannot he cannot deny his spirit. This is why the Bible lets you and I know that we are strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. Yeah. Not the outer man, not the flesh. Mm. It's by his spirit because he cannot deny his spirit. Amen. He is not divided. He will not turn his back on his spirit. He will always raise it up. But if you deny the Holy Ghost, if you refuse the Holy Ghost, which we need because we must be born again of water and spirit. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, as it is always, we just encourage you. We encourage you. It is God's that working both the will and to do the good pleasure. Yes, so don't, don't reject. Don't reject the calling of the Lord. Don't refuse the calling of the Lord mm -hmm. because it's not going to always cause you. Scripture says, Paul told Titus that the grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. It's going, the call of the Lord is going to appear on you because he's going to have a witness against us when that day comes. So there is no person living that's going to be without the call of the Lord. The problem is if you reject it, that's what's going to bite you at the judgment. But we are all we have all been approached by the grace that brings salvation. We have all, in other words, we have all considered change in our life at some point in our life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the grace of God telling us. We have all, no matter how much sin and how bad we thought we were or whatever, at some point in our life, we, we had all sat down and thought about, man, I need to change. Yeah. That was the call of God on your life. And most of us, Shook it off, jumped up, kept going. Mm. I know it happened to me a couple times. That's why I thank God today. Because years later, I got another visitation. But that one, I couldn't shake. So I thank God for not being able to shake that one. Amen. That one was persistent. <laughs> that one wouldn't leave me alone. So I thank God not being able to shake that one. Praise God. Been born again today. Mm. But anyway, we're going to pray and we're going to give you up. Well, bow down. Be gracious to heaven, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning. Thank you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness.
and for the word that we have heard. Thank you for supping with us this morning. We thank you for the spirit of Christ in our midst. We pray, Father, that you would take us from this place and help from your presence to assemble us again together at the appointed time. We praise and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We pray that uh, you would join us Wednesday night for Bible study at 6 o'clock. Pray that the word of God would continue to bless you.